Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Uncertainty looms large in Taliban ruled Afghanistan. Two Pakistani terrorists arrested in Greece. And an IA charge sheets LED terrorists for reviving terrorism in Jammu region. Let's begin the show with Afghanistan, where the country is witnessing spate of terror attacks and there is no peace despite the takeover by the Taliban. The people are dying in violence perpetrated by other terror groups like the Islamic State. In the latest, an explosion took place at a security checkpoint near foreign ministry in Afghanistan's capital, Kabul. Six people lost their lives and several others were injured in the blast. A report. A deadly explosion occurred near a security checkpoint leading to foreign ministry in Afghanistan's capital, Kabul. According to police officials, a suicide attacker before reaching the target was identified at the checkpoint and killed, but his explosives detonated. Six people were killed and several others were wounded in the blast. No terror group took responsibility for the attack. Taliban has failed to maintain peace in Afghanistan because Afghanistan is controlled by three major organizations. They are the National Resistance Front, the Taliban, and the Islamic State Khorasan province. Each of these three organizations are trying to take over power in the complete Afghanistan and are leaving no stone unturned, even if it means that they have to kill the common citizens or kill the government officials. It is this fight for power between these three organizations that Afghanistan has not seen peace till date in last so many years. This is the second bombing near the foreign ministry this year. Many extremist groups have increased their assaults since the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan in 2021. The Islamic State has also intensified attacks on Taliban forces in 2022. A recent upswing in IS activity reversed a decrease in early 2022 that came as Taliban forces conducted operations against Islamic State militants. Perpetrators of violence targeting civilians are often unidentified. A third of all incidents last year were committed by unknown actors. Target of these attacks included journalists, civil society activists, and former security personnel. Maintaining law and order in Afghanistan remains a challenge for the Taliban-led government in Kabul. The repeated blasts expose the hollow claims of the Taliban-led government about the improved security infrastructure of the country. Hundreds of common people have died in such explosions carried out by armed groups linked to the Islamic State. The ISKP is the world's most bloodiest and deadliest terrorist organization and it has vowed that it will one day control the entire Afghanistan and make Afghanistan more radicalized. And this is the fight between ISKP and Taliban that is seeing Afghanistan being covered in blood with each passing day. Insecurity has also increased along the country's periphery marked by clashes and airstrikes on the Pakistan-Afghanistan border and occasional escalations in violence on the Iran-Afghanistan border. Dozens of such violence clashes at these borders were reported in the year gone by. The tension continues to prevail as incidents are being reported where neighboring state forces engaged in clashes with the Taliban. They even perpetrated direct attacks against Afghan civilians or fired artillery or launched airstrikes into Afghan territory. Taliban rule has had a devastating impact on Afghan women and girls. Afghan women and girls are facing both the collapse of their rights and dreams and risks of their basic survival. Taliban are dictating what women must wear, how they should travel, workplace segregation and even what kind of cell phones women should have. They enforce these rules through intimidation and inspections. Take a look. 
A popular private TV news channel in Kabul aired an all-female panel in its studio with an audience of women to mark International Women's Day. This was an incredibly rare broadcast, as since the Taliban took over, many female journalists were forced out of the profession. Last year, the Taliban banned most girls and women from attending high schools, universities, and from working for any NGOs. According to the International Labour Organization, the growing restrictions imposed by the Taliban, coupled with the country's severe economic crisis, led to a 25% drop in female employment last year. More and more women are now turning to self-employment, such as tailoring at home. همدارنګه د قانون له نګانه همدارنګه په ټولنه کې دا د دې یو حق دی چې هغه باید وکولی شي کار وکړي کسب وکړي تعلیم وکړي انټرنشنل ارګنایزیشنز سچ از د یو این ریفیوجی ایجنسی الانګ وت لوکل چیریټیز ار پرووایډینګ هیلت کیر ټریننګ ټو افغان ومن ان اوردر ټو سیو لایفز اف مادرز اند بیبیز ان ریموټ پارټس اف د کنټری 40 یونګ ومن فروم ویلیجز ان د بامیان پروونس ار انرولډ ان د 2 یر ټریننګ پروګرام which started in April of 2022 at a hospital in the provincial capital. Afghanistan has the highest maternal mortality rate in Asia. The United Nations estimates that an Afghan woman dies every two hours during pregnancy and childbirth. Rahimi, for example, who has five other children, was bleeding and was in intense pain as she slowly made her way to her in-law's house. Her husband was unable to find a car to bring her to the hospital, much less an ambulance, and riding a donkey was out of question. Rahimi's baby died shortly after it was born, and before an ambulance finally arrived. <laughs> امین چی کام مدن تا یه بیشترگو سی سو خس خزا کت که اگه ما تر پیدا کنیم آمبولانس زنگ ده دمی زیاگول زنگ زدم که چی مودی که نیت مشکل داره که ما وقت تو سو سو چی کرد دیگه امتحان فیلم از دست رفت. A UN report presented at the Human Rights Council in Geneva criticized the Taliban over their abhorrent treatment of women and girls. The UN Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in Afghanistan, Richard Bennett, found that the Taliban's treatment of women and girls may amount to gender persecution, a crime against humanity. The Taliban's intentional and calculated policy is to repudiate the human rights of women and girls and to erase them from public life. It may am amount uh, to the international crime of gender persecution, for which the authorities can be held accountable. The United Nations has also warned that the Taliban administration crackdown on women's rights is likely to lead to a drop in aid and development funding in the country. The United Nations has made its single largest country aid appeal ever, asking for 4.6 billion in 2023 to deliver help in Afghanistan, where two thirds of the population, some 28 million people, require it for survival. However, the Taliban's bans on women accessing their basic rights has severely hampered aid efforts. It seems that what progress had been made for Afghan women over the last decades has been virtually washed away. While the country suffers at the hands of the Taliban and their ineffective policies and governance, it is the Afghan women who continue to bear the biggest burden. Moving on. Amid global condemnation and repeated embarrassments at several international forums, Pakistan still remains an exporter of terrorism and a threat to the world. A few days ago, two Pakistani terrorists were apprehended in Greece in connection of planning an attack on Jewish center Chabar House in Athens. Notably, the foiled attack draws a similarity to 26-11 terror attack in Mumbai in the year 2008. 
Also, India hosts National Security Advisors SEO Meet in New Delhi. We have a report. Terrorist activities emanating from Pakistan soil have not come to cease, despite the country has been declared as the exporter of terrorism at various global forums. A few days ago, two Pakistani terrorists were apprehended in Greece in connection of planning an attack against an Israeli restaurant in Athens. The Greek police, in collaboration with their national intelligence services and Israeli espionage agency Mossad, was said to have dismantled a terrorist network operating from Iran by some Pakistani nationals. According to local media, the target of the attack was Chabar House, that includes a kosher restaurant, which hosts various Jewish services in Athens. Notably, in 2008-2, when Pakistan perpetrated a heinous 26-11 terrorist attack on the port city of Mumbai in India, the Chabar House, a prominent Jewish center in the city, was among their main targets. The horrifying shooting and bombing attacks in Mumbai took lives of at least 174 people, including 26 foreign nationals, and injured over 300 people. Despite considerable international criticism, Pakistan continues to hold a factory of terrorism and networks that emerge time and again. Pakistan's contribution as a leading exporter of terror and violence is unparalleled. Can Pakistan deny the fact that it is a home to as many as 150 UN-designated terrorists and terrorist entities listed by the UN, and that these proscribed individuals have actively campaigned and contested in elections? Can Pakistan deny the fact that impunity reigns supreme in the country as perpetrators of 26-11 continue to roam, roam free? Can Pakistan deny the fact that its leaders have openly called for jihad against India? Can Pakistan deny the fact that the world's most wanted terrorist, Osama bin Laden, was found living in Pakistan near a military base, sheltered and protected by the deep state? Recently, a National Security Advisors Meet of Shanghai Cooperation Organization, or SEO Nations, was held in the capital city of India, New Delhi. The nation holds presidency of SEO for a year. Pakistan, a member of this august organization, did not send its representative to India. Understandably so, the nation wanted an escape from the meet that would discuss national security issues and ways to eradicate terrorism. However, under mounting pressure from SEO member nations, a representative from Pakistan did attend the meet virtually. During the SEO meet, the National Security Advisor of India, Ajit Doval, in his opening address made a veiled remark against Pakistan saying any act of terrorism, regardless of its motivation, is unjustifiable. Terrorism in all its forms and manifestations and its financing are amongst the most serious threats to international peace and security. Any act of terrorism, regardless of its motivation, is unjustifiable. It is important, therefore, for all countries to fulfill the obligations enshrined in the relevant counter-terrorism cooperation protocols, including UN Security Council Resolutions 1267, 1373, and successor resolutions for the purpose of identifying and implementing sanctions against global terrorist entities. Pakistan actively lends its energies to abet international terrorist groups. It hosts the most number of UNSC-designated terrorists and terror organizations. Hence, it was not a surprising revelation that Pakistani terrorists were involved in the planning of an attack in Greece. Although the intelligence agencies have pointed towards Iran for the foil terrorist attack, Pakistan seems to have played a major role. Following thorough investigations into the Uddampur ID blasts carried out by the LED through its Pakistan-based handlers, the National Investigation Agency in India has filed a charge sheet against two operators of the terror outfit. Muhammad Aslam Sheikh, Elias Adil, and Muhammad Amin Bhatt have been charged for their efforts towards revival of terror activities in Jammu region. 
The Anti-Terror Federal Probe Agency of India National Investigation Agency has filed a charge sheet against two Lashkar-e-Taiba operatives involved in Udhampur improvised explosive device blast cases hatched by the band outfit through their Pakistan-based handlers. The NIA in an official statement said that it has charged Muhammad Aslam Sheikh, Alias Adil and Muhammad Amin Bhatt for their efforts towards revival of terrorist activities in Jammu by carrying out recruitments from the pool of overcrowned workers and surrendered terrorists and motivating them to carry out terrorist acts. Last year, a blast occurred in the empty bus which was parked near a petrol pump in Jammu after its routine day service. In the blast, two persons were injured. Pakistan now, because it has like created that Frankenstein, it cannot stop it. What is happening is that today, the control of these terrorist cells, these terrorist organizations is only with ISI and that too only semi. It's not complete because now they are functioning autonomously also. What is happening is that Pakistan is facilitating the infiltration of these uh, terrorists from the international border as well as the line of control. Pakistan is not going to mend its ways. Pakistan has always resorted to anti-India activities. The state also witnessed terror activities in the past. However, due to the relentless efforts of the personnel of armed forces, BSF, CRPF and Jammu and Kashmir police, there has been a significant decline in the number of terrorist activities in the state recently. The Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir is witnessing increased momentum on the path to peace and development as the Indian government has remarkably curbed Pakistan-sponsored terrorism in the region. It is very difficult for Pakistan to digest this reality and the country has refused to end its Kashmir obsession. Time period has shown that Indian security forces have now broken the back of all militancy that was, in Pakistan, that was sponsored by Pakistan in Kashmir Valley. And we have seen that since 90, when Operation Topak uh, was launched by General Zia ul Haq and then it carried on. The peak was reached somewhere between 90 and uh, 97, 98 and after that there has been a steady decline. But ever since Operation All Out was launched by the armed forces and the security forces over there, we have seen daily count of two to three terrorists and those terrorists who were supposed to be the leaders. Security forces and Jammu and Kashmir police have rendered all terrorists bearing weapon and grenades invisible. Crossfires and grenade assaults are no longer occurring. There are neither shutdowns nor instances of stone throwing. Normalcy returning to Kashmir has led to a common man heaving a sigh of relief. He is performing his daily chores in a peaceful environment. The revival of nightlife has led to the business establishments remaining open till late hours, which has enhanced the sale and profit margins of the business people. For three long decades, there was no nightlife in Kashmir as the shops, restaurants and other establishments used to close early due to the fear of Pakistan-sponsored terrorists. As a result of terrorists and Pakistan stooges who were active in the valley being trapped and losing their ability to maintain a parallel system, Kashmir has seen a revival of nightlife over the past three years. The restoration of Kashmir's original splendor was made possible by the reappeal of Article 370 on August 5, 2019. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.